Right, welcome back. We continue right here on the Bordis and Bordis Hotline of the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Bob Pompiani, Ron Cook with you at 412-575-2600. All right, so we have our sizzling steak from Roos Chris. Shot of the day. The sizzling shot is Angelo Martini Jr. He is from Fox Chapel. He played Edgewood Country Club. Number 12, 155 yards, 7 iron. Boom. Nothing but the bottom of the cup. So congratulations to Angelo Martini Jr. Hole in one today at Edgewood. Again, brought to you by Roos Chris, home of the sizzling steak. Bob, I know I've asked you this before. You play, what, eight, nine, ten times a week? Oh, yeah. Uh, how many holes in one have you had? Just one in my life. Where at? It was down at Valley Brook. Red number two before they reconfigured the, the golf course. How long? It was short. It was like 130 yards. What would you use? Wedge. You have to buy afterwards? Yes, and I don't like that rule. I don't. No, they should buy for you. That's why you don't play golf, so you don't have to buy people. <laughs> no, I, I would not have to worry about a hole in one. I can tell you that. <laughs> right, You've only had one as many as it's one. Much. It's hard to do. I don't play as much as you think. I oh do. man, you I must don't. play every single day, don't you? No, I don't. Okay. Maybe Clinton Altuna does. Clint, have you ever had a hole in one? No, I never golfed in my life. Okay, well then the answer is no. no. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm a, that's one of the harder sports, obviously, to play, but it's not real fun watching. Um, <laughs> First off, I want to ask uh, if you watched the game tonight, caught the, the ninth inning there. Um, what's going on? I mean, that, obviously, there's a strike three to that to the batter. You missed the call, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Yelich. now I know why people are, or might be in the works for what robot something or other calls behind a plate. I don't know. Electric, but, no. I'm not into that yet. Yeah, well, I know. That's what I'm saying. But I'd ask you about, you were talking earlier at the beginning of the show about the trade deadline, or the trade talk and everything. And there was an article in our paper today that some guys may be on the way out, like, especially veterans, like, Freeze, Harrison, Mercer. I mean, they said the Dodgers may be looking at a guy like uh, Harrison. Josh Harrison. They mentioned Corey Dickerson. I mean, didn't they just pick him up in the offseason? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What and he's he's one more year what, what arbitration, and it's going to cost him some money, and then he becomes a free agent. He's already making about $6 million. He's had one home run since early May and like three RBIs since five RBIs. He's still one of then. the top batters in the game in terms but, of batting. But he hasn't. Uh, to me, he, is, he started fabulously and is really cooled off, which is what he did last year. He made the all-star team in Tampa and then fell off the face of the earth in the second half of the season. I won't be surprised if he's moved. I just don't know what he's going to get, what you're going to get back for him. We have a tweet from Chris Isaacs who says, do you guys think Mitch Keller will get a shot in the majors this year? Um, if everything just, goes the way he's got the triple right, A. And he got hammered in his first triple A outing. He got, I mean, really bad performance, but I think that takes time, and the answer would be no, unless they get so desperate they have to do it. I don't think Well, maybe a September call-up if he pitches well at Indy. That doesn't count for I him. don't know that he's going to get up here to be a big part of the team right. this year, but he's their highest regarded prospect. Let's go to Ken in Clearfield. Hey, Ken, how you doing? Hey, Bob. How you, how you guys doing this evening? Good. What's up with you? Hey, the only reason I, I, I like to see the uh, Pirates take four out of five if they can and if they, you know, if they do that, they'd be like the Oakland A's are starting to win now. They've won 19 of their last 24 games. Now, Oakland's in a different stratosphere. Yeah, and they were terrible. So if Pittsburgh wins four out of five or, or takes five out of five, I'd say, here we go. It's like the Godfather. Yeah, they, they did that last year, though. Me, they they yeah, won four they in a row against Milwaukee. They draw, yeah, they, but it's like the Godfather. Though. They let you out, and then they draw you back in. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, you. You wanted to get that line out, <laughs> and you did. He worked hard at it. No, I mean, they, they did sweep good. Milwaukee last year right before the trade deadline, and they still, you know, made moves. I mean, that's when Polanco got hurt right after that in Colorado, and they never really replaced him. And, it, and, it, and I think it really w was a bad move on Huntington's part. Tony in the Hill District joins us right now on Pittsburgh CW. Hey, Tony. Hi, Bob. How are you? Good, thanks. Um, I, I just want to say, and I also want to ask you guys a question at the end. Um, this is my own opinion. If the Pirates owner is not going to put any money into these players to satisfy to satisfy the players and and the fans who's buying these tickets. Then, to me, in my own opinion, I think he should sell the team. I just want to ask you, and James, what do what do you guys think the what kind of players they need to get the job done in order for them to put money? Well, into to me, it's it's team. about drafting and developing. It starts there, especially with every team. It doesn't matter how much you have revenue stream wise. It's about drafting and developing, and Ron, they've done, not done that as well as they could or should have, given where they are financially. Yeah, and if you're holding your breath for the team to be traded, you're going to suffocate here, because Nutting has said he wants his daughters to take over this team. They're making a fortune. He's not going to sell. 
Uh, I, mean, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, you'd like him to spend more, but he's going to do what he's going to do. He's a terrific businessman. I don't think a very good owner, but a terrific businessman. And he's not going to sell the team when he's making a lot of money. Mark Stefano on Twitter says the Tyone uh, Stallion pitched like uh, one tonight. Get the impression from Greg Brown. He didn't want to come out when we was pulled in the sixth inning. had 96 pitches. I, I tell you, he responded based on what happened his last outing. He had a meeting with Clint Hurdle. Hurdle continues to tell you that his, his numbers after the sixth inning are not good. And if he still believes that, then he's going to take him out. Now, as it turned out, he wasn't going to go much further. If he had 76 or 86 pitches at that point, I would have said he needs to keep going out there. At some point, this guy's got to go through this, Ron. You can't just keep yeah. taking him out because you're afraid of the seventh. Well, and I mean, the, the game against Philly was a perfect example. His pitch count was not high, and they still took him out because they, they didn't want him. To, the analytics said don't let him pitch the third time uh, through the lineup. Tonight, uh, I, you know, I thought he had had about enough. I had no problem with him taking out, and I did not determine uh, or even uh, – suspect at all that he was unhappy about coming out after six the way he greeted everybody in the uh, dugout. To Manaka we go. Marcelo is on the line. Hey, Marcelo, how are you? Good, Bob and Ron. How are you guys doing? Great. Great, thanks. Good. Uh, just help me uh, understand the situation. It's the bottom of the sixth. Yeah, first and second, no outs. Why doesn't Dickerson bunt to third to get a man on third with one out I, I don't get it instead you get two outs with a man on third even though Marte got a two out single mm -hmm. why not bunt in that situation uh, see, I mean, I, we, you know what I'm 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 not a big bunter I don't like giving up outs he hit into a double play if he hits a single there a double there you're not making this call tonight um, you know it's always easy to second guess I'm not a bunting guy now if it's a number eight hitter maybe the pitcher absolutely but, I, you know, Corey Dickerson's been a pretty good put-the-ball-in-play guy for him. You don't count on him hitting into a double play there. That, that's just me. I mean, I, I, I certainly respect your opinion. I don't like bunting it in a lot of cases. I really don't. Charleroi is our next destination. Hey, Mike, what's up? Hey, Bob, thank you for taking my call. Anytime. Appreciate it. No problem. Uh, I want to talk about the unwritten rule of not stealing with a four- or five-run lead. That extra run might have helped us in the event that Milwaukee came back. The Nationals came back from an 8 nothing lead. Nine. You try to get as many runs as you can. They were giving Marte that base in the eighth inning. I don't understand it. Well, I, I, don't, I don't remember that play, uh, but I do agree with you 100%. Never try to stop scoring. I don't buy that either. Uh, as you point out, when the Nationals came back, uh, you know, Cincinnati scored, what, seven in the – Ninth inning against Cleveland the other night. You yeah. never have enough runs. You know what? You don't like it as the other team. Make good pitches. Get the guys out. I couldn't agree with you more. And I, I think you see that in hockey. You know, hockey teams sometimes get criticized because their star players are out. And it's 5 nothing. You get the number one power player out with five minutes left in the game. Never but have you enough. You never have enough because you never know. We've seen too many times when teams come back from deficits like that, and you don't want to be a victim of it. We have to go to break here. Uh, I want to remind you, the uh, – Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Golf Course is brought to you by Ireland Contracting, Pittsburgh's number one home exterior expert in roofing, siding, windows, and gutters. We'll be back with more of your calls right here on Pittsburgh CW.